in 2020, I said that NEO was in the first major growth phase. Market awareness is what I called it. And we are still in that, in that same first major growth phase. How long is this going to go? It's going to go, in my mind, until we see some different things happen, perhaps profitability. That's what I marked as the second major growth phase. But since we're still in the first one, I want to illustrate this and help you understand just how early it still is for this company. First of all, this tweet that I retweeted, shout out Alfonso. Uh, and I wanted to encourage him because Alfonso was hired by Neo to become a Neo evangelist is what they call him. But basically, I see it as kind of like a hype guy. He needs to get the brand and the market awareness out there and help get the name of Neo out. And it's here's the challenging thing for him is Neo is very, very tight lipped, very quiet about what they're doing. They are doing so much more in the tech space and segment. And that was my single biggest takeaway from Neo Day over the weekend, by the way, is that they are way ahead technology wise than people are recognizing, even those of us doing the deep dive research. This thread that I highlighted, and this is why I retweeted it. And I also wanted to encourage Alfonso. This is the kind of thing that is great. It encapsulates and gives us quick hitting bullet points that shares some of what Neo has going and why they're so incredible and why it's still so early. So shout out to Alfonso. I hope we can get more of this. And that's exactly why I said, Neo, more tweets like this, please. And thank you. Uh, so shout out to Alfonso on that. I, I wanted to give him credit. He's got, he's got a tough task because I can't imagine working for Neo and having to be so careful about what I share as, you know, along the lines of an NDA, like a, you know, non-disclosure agreement where you don't talk about certain things until the company is ready for you to talk about it, but you still have to try and promote the company and the brand. That would be a challenge. And so that's one of the things he's tasked with and faced with. And so I wanted to acknowledge this is the kind of thing I sure hope we can see more of because again, the clear, concise uh, data points and that sort of thing, really easy to follow and track. But again, it highlights and just gives us a teaser, a glimpse of what is to come. And that is a tech company that sells cars and does a whole lot more. It's it's incredible. I, I've called it a holding company. I've called it I'll often use, well, you know what? I'm not going to go there. Let's, let's move on to the next point because there's more and I don't want to lose you. There's too much good stuff to share. How about this? This is the Seth test. For those who don't know, my buddy Seth, we will do this on live streams and we haven't done it recently. We need to do it next time we do a live stream. I want to know how early it is for Neo. So this is one of the things we do. We go and check what Elon Musk has going on on Twitter, for example, look at his followers. He has 123 million plus followers. And then what if we go to Tesla and look at what they have going on? And then we're going to do a comparison with Neo just to illustrate and really kind of hit this point home of it is still so early. Tesla with over 18 million, almost 19 million followers. All right. So understand that's the difference between a mature brand that's been operating for a while globally. Meanwhile, and the best point maybe is the one I'm going to bring up at the end. So don't go anywhere. But first, let's look at Neo. This is the Neo Twitter page. They have only 215,000, almost 216,000 followers. Nowhere near the exposure. The market awareness is at its infancy stage. That is something that I want to remind people about because I stay in the research and in that mode. And sometimes it's easy for me to forget how many people have no idea what this company is doing or who they are. And this is the final one. And this is a wonderful way to bring this point home. For those who don't know, Marcel Munch is in Germany. He was an investor in Tesla. He's an investor in Neo. He sees both of them as winning long-term. But what's interesting is this Ross Gerber, and he, I looked, he's got like 300,000 followers on Twitter. So he even has more followers than Neo does on Twitter. Okay. So hold on. Now this guy is based in California. He says, excuse me, but Tesla still has no competition. Who can make a hundred thousand EVs a year? The only ones I see are BYD and Polestar. Well, first of all, Ross, you're wrong. Neo has already delivered over a hundred and was it a hundred six thousand? Hold on. Marcel gave us the number. Let's just check it out. And I love he, he's trolling him a little bit. It's kind of funny. He says, I offer market research and consulting services, some for free on Twitter and YouTube. Kind of teasing Ross about not having a clue here. Look at that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what do we have here? We've got already, with the year not quite over, 
Neo's delivered over 106,000 vehicles. Come on, Ross. Let's let's hire somebody to do some research for us. Huh? Okay, I'm just giving him a hard time at this point. But then Ross goes on to say, the only one I see are BYD and Polestar. I think I read that before. 75 million cars sold a year globally. Tesla sells 2% of them currently. Only one direction for Tesla. We've been waiting for years for anyone to scale Tesla. Yeah, but what you don't recognize, and it's obvious, is what's coming from China. And this is a business lens that I am using to be very clear. Some folks mistake and, and confuse politics for business, but I'm looking at it from the business standpoint. China is set to scale and go to NEVs faster than anyone else. They're already leading. And it's interesting that Neo being positioned in that market, I also saw, it, I was going through the, the thread a little bit further and I saw that Ross was getting into it with people who were calling him out for being wrong about this. Some people had pointed out, uh, and shout out DC work, Denny, I see you uh, <laughs> doing work. Uh, he was calling him out and basically saying, no, Neo is global. And they are, you know, or maybe it was him, somebody else. Other people were basically saying, hey, Ross, you're wrong. This is not right. And then Ross was trying to defend himself and talk about, oh, well, they're only selling in China. That doesn't count. And I'm like, okay, hold on. He's talking about BYD and Polestar, both brands from China. Does he not recognize that? But also, Neo is selling in Europe in a number of countries now. So again, a nod to just how early it is. People do not realize how early it is. Market awareness is only the first major growth phase for this company, for Neo. Oh, and how about this for a fun fact? The stock price has gone to over $60, almost $67 in this infancy stage, the first major growth stage. Look, it's wild. It's early. And we got people like Ross who don't have a clue what is going on. They're not doing the research. They clearly aren't understanding what is coming from China a lot. And, and on the one hand, I, sh I, sh I should give Ross a little credit because he references Polestar and Geely here, but he completely missed on Neo. And I've seen a number of Tesla bulls and I don't know if it's selective. I don't know if they're just not doing any research and, and they're that disconnected from the markets. I, I don't know what the issue is because I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll say they just don't know. They're, they're not aware, they're not familiar. And that means we're still in this really, really early aspect of the market awareness stage. The first major growth phase for Neo, still so early that folks aren't getting it. They don't see it. And for anybody who didn't watch the Neo day, holy cow, it was, it blew me away because of the tech sort of flexing that Neo did. And they really just teased us with some stuff. They, they still didn't really put it all on full display. I believe a big part of the reason is they know how competitive the Chinese market is and they want to maintain whatever advantage they can and also stay focused and mired in the work as they are positioning to become a globally dominant brand. And I am not seeing them. I have not seen them as a competitor to Tesla because they're in different segments. But man, it's going to be wild when we start seeing that Neos with their swappable battery technology that's upgradable also allows their cars to last much, much longer than other brands. And then when they come in with sub brands, something a little bit more competitive on the lower end of the pricing scale that maybe will compete with Tesla, that's going to be really interesting. But hold on, let's not get ahead of ourselves because again, we're not even a profitability with the company yet. That's the second major growth phase. We're not there. This one that I'm talking about, only the first, market awareness. We're still learning about this company. The world is still learning about it. Obviously, we got folks in the business who don't have a clue. And that's great. That's a nod to just how early it still is, in my opinion. Come back and see me again. I appreciate you stopping by. Woo, market awareness. Let's go. Thanks, folks. We'll see you all again real soon.